Hey everyone, it's John, and today what we're going to do is continue on the CCMP-based switching series. So if you recall from the previous video, what we had just discussed was Uplink Fast. Now, for a quick recap, what Uplink Fast did was it dealt with direct failures. So let's just quickly recap. So let's imagine this is the root bridge. We've got a root port through here and a block port here, a root port here, block port root port and designated and designated okay so if this switch here and this switch here was configured for uplink fast what it would effectively do is if this root port here suddenly failed rather than waiting the 15 seconds of listening and the 15 seconds of learning i.e 30 seconds total it would immediately fail over and start pushing traffic through the backup link, it wouldn't wait any longer, it would just go straight into the forwarding state. And like I say, that's with direct failures because like I say, those links are directly connected. Now the key distinction with Backbone Fast is that it deals with indirect failures, it's how it, how it resolves topology changes with indirect failures. So let's look at it from the point of view of say Switch 3 again. How is it going to react if an indirect, an indirect link fails? So what would that be if this link failed? It's not connected, okay? If this link goes down, what happens? Like I say, this is the root bridge, which would mean that that link would be the root port link for this switch here. So if this one goes down, what's going to happen is this switch is going to have no connection to the root bridge. So then it's automatically going to think, I'm the root bridge. That's what it's going to announce to itself. So then what it's going to do is send out BPDUs down here and down here, which will be, of course, inferior BPDUs because this switch here and this switch here still got a connection to the root bridge. Therefore, they're still getting better BPDUs from this one. So we get inferior BPDUs getting sent down here. So let's look at it from just Switch 3's point of view. This is a block link. It's now receiving an inferior BPDU down this link here. The way spanning tree reacts normally is it goes through something called a max age timer. Now the max age timer is basically there to prevent spanning tree too hastily making a change and forwarding too early and potentially causing a loop. So what it does, it says, I hear your inferior BPDU, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait 20 seconds before I do anything. And then once that 20 seconds has elapsed, if nothing has corrected itself, then I'm going to assume that there isn't a, a loop. And then I'm going to start trying to, I'm going to assume there actually is a, really is a link failure rather. Therefore, there is not a loop. Therefore, I can slowly start transitioning this link into a forwarding state without risk of a loop. So we wait 20 seconds for the max age and then 15 seconds forward delay of listening. 15 seconds forward delay of learning before eventually forwarding the traffic, okay? So meanwhile, whilst this goes on, like I say, this poor switch here, it loses its connection to the root bridge. So its root port goes down. It assumes I'm the root, but it sends down these BPDUs and BPDUs, unfortunately, to links which at the other end are blocked. So it's basically completely isolated. On itself it can't get to the root bridge and when it's sending down its BPDUs effectively they're getting ignored so it's not very good for switch 2 so what backbone fast does backbone fast addresses that and it says for these switches here they're going to behave differently when this indirect failure happens and what it does is for switches which are configured with backbone fast when they receive an inferior BPDU on a blocked port, it's going to assume that something has went wrong with that switch which is sending it. It's going to say quite intelligently that if this switch is sending me an inferior BPDU on a blocked port, then it must have lost its connection to the root bridge. Therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely cancel out the max age timer which is 20 seconds, I'm going to cancel that completely, we don't want that, and I'm immediately going to transition to listening and learning before finally forwarding. 
So the net effect is, in a nutshell, for switches configured with backbone fast, when an indirect failure happens, rather than actually waiting 50 seconds for the topology to really reconverge, it's going to cut that 50 seconds down by 20 seconds to only 30 seconds. Now 30 seconds is still not great, but it's a lot better than 50 seconds. And that is basically the effect which we get with Backbone Fast. And like I say, once this link is forward in traffic, what can happen is the real superior BPDUs coming from the root, bid, the root bridge can be relayed through this link. And then this poor old switch here who thought he was the root bridge says, hey, wait a minute. I've just received an in I've just received a superior BPDU. I'm not the root bridge, and it kind of calms down and says, "Okay, I'm not the root bridge. What I need to do now is figure out the lowest cost to the root bridge, and I'll choose my root port, which in this case could be this one, maybe or that one. Doesn't really matter. Whatever the calculation may be, depending on the link speed and whatnot, MAC addresses and stuff. So let's say we go here, we forward here. This is a root port. This link's completely broken." and this one could be designated, whatever, okay? And then the topology basically resolves itself. So in effect, in a nutshell, Backbone Fast is cutting out 20 seconds for us. Speed things up a little bit. So let's have a look and see it in action then. So like I say, let's just have a look at the topology. And this switch here, switch one, is the root bridge. I've hard-coded that to be the root. And you can see that by all ports designated, and of course, the very obvious, this bridge is the root. <laughs> Um, and in the case of switch 2, we're going to see gig 0, 00 as its root port, which is the one we're going to shut down. So show span, and you can see gig 0, 00 as the root port, this one here. And just looking at one more, we'll look at switch 3, that's the one we'll focus on for the purposes of this demo. And we'll see that gig 0, 01 is the root port, and gig 0, 02 is blocked. Show span. So gig01 root port, gig02 is blocked. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut down this port and when the BPDU, the BPDU comes down this link here, switch2 is going to do nothing for 20 seconds before realising something's wrong and then slowly start transitioning through those listening and learning phases. So we go on to... And do you know what? I'll actually get switch 3 just ready so we can just see the two of them in comparison with each other and gig 0, zero. and if I shut this up oh, shut it down there we go it's shut down and we go to show span and there's no reaction we're still unblocked from gig 2 so basically Switch 2 is on an island itself, it's shutting out, I'm the root, uh, here's my BPDUs and nobody's accepting them yet, but it's still, the, the topology is just sitting still, waiting for something to resolve itself, and now it's starting to listen, and then it'll eventually learn, and then forward, and eventually Switch 2 will realise that it's not, it's not the root, and things will normalise. But like I say, that's an awfully long time to wait, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the switches, do you know what, I'll just bring this back up. We're going to go through all the switches and just configure Backbone Fast with this super complicated command. It's just in global configuration mode and it's just configured globally for all interfaces basically. Backbone Fast, that's it. That's all you need to do. So whilst the theory might be a little bit confusing if you've never seen it before, the command is really, really easy. And we'll do spanning tree backbone fast. And we'll do spanning tree backbone fast. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll get switch three ready again, just so you can see, because the transition is going to be pretty quick in a listing stage. And I'll also get switch two ready. Okay. So again, switch to show span, its root port will again be 0, zero because we've no shut that again. It's going through this link here. And we're going to shut that down again. But this time, switch these going to be a bit quicker off the, the mark and realise something's wrong and go straight to listening. So let's shut that down. 
that's that shut down there and show span and we are immediately see that we're immediately in listening stage no waiting for the max stage to expire before taking action immediately taking action we're learning and eventually we'll be forwarding give that a wee minute just to catch up I'll probably be around it now and we're now forwarding and like I say switch to will realize it's not the route it's calculated the route port through a gig at 02 this one here so it can get to the route bridge that way and the topology is now stabilized so we basically shaved off 20 seconds by utilizing backbone fast and that's pretty much the theory for backbone pass it's it's really just remembering the two key points is that it deals with um well the main point really is that it deals with indirect failures and the second point is that it doesn't actually give you immediate failover the way uplink fast does but it does take the the time from 50 seconds down by 20 seconds to only 30 seconds and that's it so thanks very much i'm going to continue on this switching series and up with another video pretty quickly i think and that's the end of the video, so thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon. Okay, bye-bye, thanks.